everybody, and welcome to this episode of, uh, this week's episode of uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix, Unix at Tau. Uh, we are now, hopefully, uh, on a regular production schedule. We can do this on a weekly basis, if I can maintain my schedule properly. So that's, that's kind of the whole thing here. So we got, this is the fourth week of 2014. That's the episode edition. Uh, we are are so far sticking to our production schedule. There are some issues that still have to be worked out, but primarily we're getting it done. Uh, so in this episode, what are we going to talk about? We're going to look more closely at open source and some of the issues within open source. Then, of course, we're also going to talk, and this is specific to, uh, to uh, Android and to Ubuntu. And then from there, we're going to go on and do a, uh, our continuing series on um, uh, quality assurance engineering. We're going to take a second look at, uh, or a continued look at uh, Dolphin. I know they upgraded this week, so the, and the thing is, what I noticed from the upgrade that they did pay attention to some of the issues, and we will see whether or not the fixes for these issues actually worked, because here's a problem. Just because you do, you're do you working doing QA on one device doesn't necessarily mean that the problem that appears on one device is going to appear on another device. In other words, issues can be device specific. And this is where I think we need to take a look at things and see whether or not something is a device specific problem or is it something that is more universal. In other words, something that goes across the board is independent of the device. Uh, so that's what we have on store in store in store for this uh, this um, <clears throat> this episode. And so let's get on with our first segment. All righty. All right. This we're back to our first segment uh, of uh, Ubuntu Beastie in the town. And in this episode, we're we're looking at open source challenges. This is, we're in the section of uh, Android to Ubuntu. As I said before, the goal here is, and this that I set to do, be done in this show, is uh, I'm going to work on the development of moving Android towards open source development. And that's particularly bringing Android back into open source, back into the uh, framework of Linux. And in my choice here, I'm moving it towards Ubuntu. In other words, I'm going to unite the Android platform with Ubuntu. That's my goal. And as I stated, you have to do an initial overview to, to find out exactly where you want to go and what projects need to be done. And because you have to break up these projects into sub-projects. In other words, you, have, you can't simply tackle the problem all at once. You have to do an overview. And as you do your overview, you need to get into more and more specifics, see what areas really do need to be taken, take, taken care of, what need to be looked at, who's doing what, what are the specific issues, and one of the issues that I found, uh, and this is common to all the open source issues, all the open source projects, and this is financial stability. Whether it's Wikipedia, uh, Canonical, or uh, Samba, or any of the open source choices out there, the issue is financial. How do you continue funding your project when the project that you're working on is going to be given away for free? And this is particularly the issue. This is where the problem comes in. Because you can have talent come in. And this is what was pointed out on, uh, on, on Google has a channel on YouTube where they have different people come in and talk and there's a discussion. One of the discussions that I saw was on um, was on Samba. It was by the uh, the person who either founded or, or or developed Samba, and he said that the Samba has become so popular now and so in demand that what happens is that you have Samba as a good environment for young programmers to come in and test their chops. In other words, develop their skills there. And as their skills are developed, the, the Samba and the work they do at Samba becomes a showcase. But the problem is, if that is the case, 
at some point in time, as the programmer gets good, the programmer is going to be hired away from Project Samba. And once again, that hole is going to be there again. So, you know, there are particular issues that, uh, you know, with Samba, while it does provide a good step up uh, environment for, for programmers, there is that challenge of, well, how do you fund it? How do you finance it? How do you keep things going? And this is particularly the issue here is that I'm, I'm applying the GNU format, the, uh, that's the open source format, to uh, all the science here, all the physics, all the research here. And it is a challenge to, to, to really, really extend uh, what I can and can't do in terms of the fi financing and financial stability. It is particularly an issue here because there isn't, there isn't a lot of sympathy out there in the business community and particularly your tax, and I'm talking about uh, more particularly your tax community. The business community, you know what, you can actually work with the business community uh, with GNU stuff. There are things that you can trade and, and barter with. There are things you can trade, you know, you can, you can work out a deal with somebody, but the people you can't work out a deal with are the tax people, the, the government. Ironically, as Obama, as Obama, as Obama is talking about, uh, you know, the State of the Union addresses this week, and he's talking about jobs, jobs, jobs. We gotta, you know, uh, you know, we gotta work on the gap between the, the the rich and the poor, and so on and so forth. Well, the way you work on the gap of rich and poor, poor in terms of your education is right here in the open source community. But it's in the open source community that you can't go out with the government and make a deal with them. You can go out and make a deal with almost any company out there and get a good deal for yourself, for your company to doing open source. And that way you can fund what you're doing. But you can't make a deal with the government. And in many cases, your biggest obstacle, your biggest challenge to the financial hurdle that is open source is the government itself. And it is a real significant problem. And this is actually what pushes a lot of uh, people wonder, what, why is, are all these companies going to China? Well, it's because of the government. The government puts so many roadblocks in it, so much red tape in the way of doing your work. Again, you, and again, you cannot make a deal with these people. There is no deal to be made with the government. They don't care. And what's happening is they're pushing all development overseas. And along with your manufacturing, all manufacturing, all development is overseas. Why? Because there's so much t regulation, there's so much red tape, and because you cannot make a deal with the government, uh, they simply say, well, Forget this. It's easier to do it overseas. It's easier to, to ship the stuff in than it is to uh, than it is to deal with the people down below. You know, in in, in, in the government. And this is what, 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 as an open source person, something you have to realize that you may not have, you may not be able to stick locally, locally in terms of making your money. What you should be doing is thinking globally. And putting your uh, not going out as a person, but setting up a corporation, an international corporation, and making money in the global environment through the internet. And once you can do that and establish that you can generate a sufficient number amount of income, then you're in, and it's not necessarily mean you're making a lot of money. It means a sufficient amount of income means that you're making enough money to keep yourself stable through the years. And have at the end of each year room to grow. In other words, you you have to grow as a as as a company, as a project, as open source project. Every year you have to grow. You should be growing every year, year after year. If you cannot grow year after year, uh, and still remain financially stable, then you have a problem because at some point in time you're going to fail. Failure is is a major part of open source. Failure does occur and it does happen, and you have to account for this. If you don't account for failure and the risks of failure, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up in a very bad situation. And again, the, pe the people who are not going to care is the government. Let me give you an example here. You have credit card debt, and this is a lot of people. A lot of people don't necessarily understand this. Let's assume. Let's assume that you have a fair amount of credit card debt. And you're up to your eyeballs in credit card debt. There are certain credit cards, if you, if you know how to do this right, well, it's not going to look good on your financial records. And you're going to take a hit for this, where 
you could jettison some credit cards and say, well, I can't afford these credit cards. I can't afford the payments. You simply dump the credit cards. It's not that you intended to do this. You're not doing this in a fraud. You're simply saying that, you know, you're looking at your financial situation and you can't handle everything. You pick the ones that are most important to you and you work with that. In other words, you bring things down to the point that you can handle it at. You don't go out and get a loan or home equity on a credit card. Why? Because credit card is unsecured debt. Yes, they're going to nag you. Yes, you're going to have letters. Yes, you're going to have phone calls. But credit card, as is defined, is not secured debt. And what happens? What, what will happen? As you get rid of your credit card cards and you just keep one that really works for you, that you can handle in terms of the payment, pay down your debt on that particular credit card. And once you've paid down that debt on the credit card, and you've begun to get your got, got, begun to get your finances back in order again, and you have a stable income coming again, coming in again. Guess what's going to happen? Those same credit card companies that had sent you to uh, collections, who were knocking na nastily on your door, they're going to come back again and, and offer you credit cards again. It's going to take a couple of years to do that. It takes it takes between two and four years to clear off all your debt before the credit card companies will come back and start offering you credit again. But that hit can be done. You can take that hit and you can deal with it if you know how to deal with your finances, if you know how to budget your money so that you can bring everything well within budget. But the thing is, this example of how you can actually deal with a credit card company, which is something serious, uh, is not something you can do with the government. You cannot go up with the government and say, well, let me pay this part of the debt down and, you know, four years later on, once I'm doing better, then you can give me more credit. Okay? The government's not going to do that at all. The government is, is going to want what it wants. It's, it treats your obligation as a secured debt. In other words, a sec and this is where you have to make the difference between secured debt and unsecured debt. Credit cards are unsecured debt because there's nothing secure in the debt. There is no assets on the line securing that debt. A secured debt like an equity mortgage or an equity loan, what happens, the reason why you have an equity loan is you're putting up collateral. You're putting up either your car, you're putting up bonds, you're putting up stocks, and more often than not, you're putting up your house. So if something happens to that secured debt, what happens is they come after your, your security. In other words, if you put up your house, they're going to come after your house. If you put up your car, they're going to come after your car. If you put up your stocks and bonds, in other words, you put up your retirement fund, they're going to come after your retirement fund. And that's why your priority in dealing with debt is secured debt first, unsecured debt last. And if all you have room for is to deal with your secured debt, you drop the unsecured debt, take the hit on your credit report, Pay down your secured debt, get it to a point where it's manageable, and then four years on, you can talk about restarting things again. But the problem is, again, with the government, you can't do that. You cannot do this with the government. The government does not care what economic consequences happen to you. And this is the irony here. These are the same people, this is the same politicians who stand up and say, Oh, we want to help make people wealthy. We want to help make sure that people have a home. We want to, we don't want to have poor people. Well, what is the government doing when it's when it's when it's when it's going out there and not caring that they're putting a business person out of business, taking their home, taking their car, and putting them into a, a homeless shelter? I mean, what do they, they think they're doing? And this is what I'm saying is that. You, you, you can no longer think locally. You have to think globally. In other words, you have to put your money offshore, out of touch. And the money that you do bring into the country that you use personally, that's where you declare your taxes. The money you don't use personally, and just, you do, are going to have to compensate and adjust for this in, in your project, you, you, know, you don't declare because you're not bringing it in. You're not using it here. And the thing is, you're going to have to look at, and this is what I've done, unfortunately, I live in, in an Asian neighborhood. I've had to take a serious look at outsourcing uh, to India and China. 
and I found a lot of good options. In other words, I can I can save. I found a way to save in terms of the projects that I'm doing. I'll save a lot more money than I would have if I had simply go on locally to here, go out to my local local electronic shops, and say, okay, let me pick up something from here. I'm saving. I'm saving fifty percent by thinking outside the box by doing things on a global basis. And this is sort of what has to happen with open source. Open source, yes, you're local, but you have to think in terms of the internet being globally connected, connected around the world, not caring where where you connect with another person. If a person's in Toronto, or in the, they're in Boston, or they're in, in England, or they're in Japan, or they're in India, it doesn't matter where they are. The internet connects you. The internet is your connection. And as long as you know how to work properly with the internet, and know how to build your uh, office and everything else on the internet, then um, you're not going to have a problem. And that's where your key is. Anyways, uh, what we're going to do next is that, because we just talked about this particular issue with open source, uh, the next uh, sec few sections that we're going into now is we're going to go into the Dolphin Q uh, QA, the, the Quality Assurance. And we're going to take a more specific look into there as to what the particular problems are. And there are, I've noted there are two particular problems here. And the way I'll do it is this. Uh, first, we'll look at uh, the issues with OpenIPTV in terms of the different channels. They have channels that you can get on OpenIPTV. And as I stated before, as we talk about OpenIPTV, uh, there is an issue with open IPT, but I will talk about that in the beginning of the next segment, and so the next segment is going to be talk we're going to be talking about uh, IPTV and, and particularly the issues with open IPTV, uh, and that will lead us into our discussion on the quality assurance uh, engineering with Dolphin. Alrighty, welcome back. This is the next segment uh, of Ubuntu Beast to Units of Town. As I stated before in the last segment, we are going to use the uh, discussion on OpenIP TV as uh, our lead into the quality assurance uh, engineering for uh, Dolphin, uh, Explo uh, the Dolphin uh, web browser. Now, as I've been, ta I've been talking about, uh, is that there is now a, a difference, a distinction between IPTV and Open IPTV. IPTV is now being taken over by the major corporations, by the major media corporations, and this is what's happening in Verizon, and I'll point to a, a number of issues, we'll probably deal with this next week, into the issues that are starting to pop up with, uh, with uh, the majors. Verizon, uh, as I got a notice from last, from, from last week, I got a notice from somebody, uh, one of the lists that was on the, uh, concerning uh, the openness of the internet. And what they were talking about is that the three judges in a Verizon court case struck down the whole concept of net neutrality. That means that uh, networks like Verizon, AT&T, uh, and this happens up here in, in Canada with, between Rogers and, um, if you're on Rogers and uh, Bell, where they throttle a lot of traffic. They, they, if, you're, if you're not on their networks, and you're trying, in other words, you're not using content on that network, they'll throttle everything to the point where you, they bring you back to dial-up. And you'll see this, that as you go out to content, let's say you want to go out to content, like you want to, if you're a Greek person, you want to Greek, watch Greek TV over the internet. Can't do that unless you've signed up with Rogers uh, and agreed to pay for that content. So in other words, you can't watch your own Greek TV channels in Greece, uh, uh, <laughs> if you're a Greek person, uh, here in Canada, because uh, the major companies have blocked you. They're, 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 in, in some cases, where they don't outright block you, and because the, 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 the uh, channel has opened up and allows people to watch um, geographically unrestricted, what they'll do is they'll set the connection up in such a way that the connection fails often. In other words, they will not guarantee the throughput uh, to a particular channel. 
And well, so to some degree, you can say, okay, yeah, that's the internet. That's the, there's no way they can control this. But what they end up doing is they, they use their uh, uh, their their quality control, their their uh, their own sort of um, I can't remember what the DNS term is for it, but they're, they're doing a traffic control basically, where they prior, prioritize signals and particular traffic. And if your traffic is not on the prioritized list, and I've seen it with some, some of the of these uh, routers that offer uh, that 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 sort of the uh, traffic quality control, um, it does degrade traffic. Some certain traffic that is not identified as important traffic is degraded. So in other words, not all content on the internet is treated equally. And this creates a problem, particularly if you want to use content that is not recommended by uh, Rogers. All Rogers or, or Verizon has to do is take the content that it thinks should be seen on its network or is not favorable to its network and put it down on a lower tier in terms of its traffic priority. As soon as it's done that, what it has done is set the network up so that its own traffic is superior and gets to guaranteed, but other traffic that's going through the network doesn't. And what this does is, it, because the in, internet is set up as multiple networked environments, as one network, major network, on the backbone of the internet is degraded, other areas become degraded as well. In other words, you have an overall degradation of the internet itself. And this makes IPTV, unless you're, unless you're choosing the major IPTV, you know, these like Verizon for IPT or AT&T for IPT or any of the major companies for IPTV, unless you're choosing them, it makes everything else useless. So in other words, you want to you watch Hulu, Hulu over IPTV. That's your IPTV choice or Netflix. You're not choosing Verizon. You're not choosing... Uh, Warner Bros. You know the the Time Warner Cable. You're not choosing AT and T. What does this mean for these people? You have these packages. It means that the, that your your viewing of whatever you want to view on on these channel on the, these IPTV offerings is going to be degraded. In other words, you may not get the high definition that you expect to get uh, from Hulu Plus. You may not get the high definition uh, uh, that you expect to get from from Netflix. You may not get the high definition that you expect. From Google Plus, why? What happens? Or from from Google TV, why? Because as you're watching it through the, the thing, if the signal is degraded, if the, that traffic is degraded, downgraded, what happens is that, that, that you have to have uh, you have to in order to keep the quality of, of the picture up, you have to increase your buffering rate. In other words, the amount of memory that has to store has to increase, and if it increases past what your TV can handle, the signal what you see on TV is degraded, and this is what happens. The signals that are coming through right now uh, for uh, open IPTV, these are not part of the majors. Uh, these are part, particularly some of the small, smaller uh, IPTV offerings. They're not good. The quality is not there. It's not where it should be. And I will show you this to some degree uh, of how this actually works and how this actually works ends up working out on... Uh, on the uh, uh, on these different platforms, when I move out to the uh, when I move out to the example for for Dolphin, <laughs> that's what I should have said. Uh, so, and the thing is, is that while these are negatives, they're also challenges, and that means that we now have a platform sort of to move ahead with with I, with uh, IPTV. There is a product to work on. Uh, one of the uh, the projects that I am working on for Open IPTV is Open IPTV, and I use the uh, I hyphen VOD, so I Open IPTV Video on Demand. I think that's where our first challenge has to be is Video on Demand, and I will show you some of the challenges of setting up and using YouTube actually as an Open IPTV platform for Video on Demand. The question is, can you use it for 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 uh, live? Can you do so also do live? And then, and I'll show you some challenges from there. Then uh, the next question is, what's the head for YouTube? 
Now, there's a lot of contention out there. There's a lot of uh, issues with YouTube, in particular with Google. And the question is, will YouTube, will Google become the next MS? And what do I mean? Apple, we see, has become as restrictive as Microsoft. Very restrictive. And that's what pushed a lot of people off the iPad platform onto the Android platform. The question is, as the Android platform has now taken over market share, it now has more or less a majority market share, is Google going to start closing up and becoming as restrictive as Apple and Microsoft? That's the question. And if it does, that's going to be a major challenge for IPTV because it's going to mean that our, our potential to build open IPTV on the YouTube platform is going to become very restrictive. And that's where the question is going to be for the next few months and, let's see, years going forward with IPTV. So, as we end the segment here, because we are now going to go out to the uh, quality control engineering for Dolphin, that means we're going to move into the research desk, onto the research desk, and I'll pull out the camera and we will record as we go through the various different um, uh, options uh, on IPTV that, uh, <clears throat> that are kind of on um, the IPTV choice. So that, that was, uh, we're using Dolphin as our IPTV choice and then going from there. Anyways, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next segment. Alrighty. Uh, this is a segment that we're going to do on uh, uh, Dolphin, the Dolphin Browser QA. We're in Dolphin Browser, browser already. And I think I'm going to take you along on a YouTube stroll. The way I'll be doing this is as I click around, uh, you'll be seeing that. And then as we uh, go into diff different uh, uh, videos, I'll stop. So you won't actually see the videos, but you'll actually see the result of uh, of clicking around. So let's go into the usage of uh, of uh, Dolphin Browser on uh, IPTV. A little notice this uh, to remind you we are on a Android uh, Gingerbread 2.3 platform. There's 512 megabytes of RAM in here and there's 32 gigs on an SD card and this most of this stuff runs off an SD card so uh, you can pretty much use uh, there, there's a good balance in terms of what you can and can't use there is an attached keyboard a physical keyboard rather than a soft keyboard and I do have a USB uh, uh, hub here as well so oh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on this one here we're in what to watch this is what you first come into when you see uh, when you see uh, what you call it, um, uh, when you log, first log into uh, YouTube Mobile, we're on the mo YouTube Mobile site. So let's click on this, and it comes up and asks you if I want to do a new tab. So let's go do new, new tab because it gives you that option here now, anyways. And the thing you should note is that uh, brow the Dolphin browser has been upgraded. Uh, but some problems still persist and I'll show you what they are so we're gonna uh, watch this video here it's a little slow going in So we just finished watching uh, that uh, that video, and you see it gives you the right uh, it gives you the right URL. That's if you do the tab. Let's do not do the tab. Let's check out this one here. And what happens is that the uh, number didn't change. If we reset, the, uh, re reload the page. There you go. This is the page reloaded. 
and now we're at the right URL. So what happens is the URL problem still exists. Uh, I will also show you that on other devices that the URL problem, when you're not doing the tech, when you're not doing tabs, still exists. So this is particularly this is particularly an issue, and then I will I'll, I will show you as we go back. Uh, let's see if we have other issues here. That was a left click to go back. We were supposed to go back. We didn't go back. So let's try this again. There we go. Now we're moving back. This is the one we were at before. So sometimes clicks work and sometimes clicks don't work. It's kind of intermittent. And again, as I said, I'm not using a. Uh, I'm not on a tablet. I'm on a uh, Android device with a mouse. This pointer here is being moved around by a mouse. It is not. Uh, done by finger or uh, touch. So, and then I still can do this. This is not a problem. I, what happens is that more often than not, things work okay on here. There are some issues that have to be dealt with. But beyond that, uh, you know, the, this works pretty well. So we're going back to the uh, to the, uh, the first the first tab. And what happens is on the first tab here, when you go back to the first tab, it automatically reloads. And so I'm going to go watch this one here. There's something here I want to watch right here. And I'm going to go take a look at that. So I'm not going to go to subscribe yet. There I go. Hold and click. New tab. Yeah. So what happened, and this is the the, the irony here. If I had uh, Jetpack installed, I couldn't do this in Jetpack. In Jetpack, when you click and then click on no, click and help, when you click and click and hold on Jetpack in this in, in this environment here, what ends up happening is that yes, it pops up, open a new tab, and you can open a new tab. What ends up happening is that. Even though you select a new tab for it to open, and it does open here as a vlog, but the original tab also loads the video as well. In other words, you have, uh, instead of having just this new tab open up in, in, and become the video, the original tab doesn't stay where it was supposed to stay. What it does, it becomes the new tab. In other words, it duplicates the new tab. Anyways, uh, uh, I'm going to go watch this now, and I'll be back. Uh, as uh, we stroll around further. Okay, so we're back. I've done the thumbs up, added it to the playlist. Now I want to send this video out because this is one of the videos that I wanted to come back to later on. Uh, but it's going to come back on the uh, system below. So I want to send it out. And one of the cool features here is allow this allows me to uh, email uh, the video to the computer down below. Just by doing this, and it's actually a pretty cool feature, and it works pretty well. I'm typing in here with a keyboard. And away we go. Now, the reason why I started this, I wasn't going to start this, but there's a vlog down here, right here, called Vlog 3 IMS uh, LA 2014, that I want to view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up another uh, another uh, tab. And you'll see the tabs work actually pretty well. But once you start getting out here more, there are some issues that do pop up. Because I'm going to watch this. And then I'm going to go subscribe to her. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to watch, watch that, that section here. I'm going to watch this video, then after the video, uh, we'll watch and I'll go we'll subscribe to her. Alright, this is one of the issues that popped up. Uh, I wanted the uh, vlog number four here, the one at the bottom, but when it happens, when you select that, it selects the entire group of three, and it ended up producing this one here, the vlog number five. I'm going to try this again. 
I'm going to click down here. See what it gives me. Oop. There we go. But I'll have to go back to the channel later on. So let's go back to the channel and see if we can do this. Okay. We want videos. Here we go. We want the IMAX 4. Okay, and it gives us uh, IMAX 5. <laughs> Log 5. Yeah. Is it, that, this is one of the problems here looking at. It doesn't give you the right videos to select, so that means uh, I'm going to have to go back and uh, uh, just do through here rather than, do, rather than doing click and hold. I have to come back and actually do. Let's see if I, if it works out here now. There we go. There we go. There are some tricks to this. Not everything works exactly right. So uh, there are still things. Overall, it's good. There are workarounds to the problems when you do have a problem. Uh, but uh, there are problems still. But this is what QA is for. QA is to find these problems and then uh, hopefully uh, a solution can be found. Alright, I was afraid this was going to happen. And what ha once you get too far out, you get too many tabs up there, the dolphin becomes uh, unstable. In this case here, what's happened, it, the way it crashed, the way it came down, it changed the resolution of the screen here. That's why this is all larger and uh, zoomed in. Uh, so what has to happen now is the, the device has to be rebooted. So we're going to do that. Okay, we have rebooted, and now that we've rebooted, notice that the icons are smaller. Okay, what has happened, and you know, this is the way it's supposed to be, this is the way it's supposed to look, is that this is the right resolution. When the desktop seems to magnify and everything across here is larger, what has happened is the resolution of the screen, the output of the device has dropped. So that crash by Dolphin, uh, the Dolphin browser, actually caused the resolution of the screen to change. So let's go into Dolphin again. There we go. And even if you wait a few minutes here like this, there's supposed to be a recovery, or, 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 or it's supposed to recognize that Dolphin actually crashed, but there's been no recognition that Dolphin actually crashed, and so there's no restore here, there's no report being sent. So in other words, the uh, reporting uh, capacity of Dolphin isn't working, isn't functional, and so no report has been sent back to uh, Dolphin, the, the, uh, the, the, the developers of Dolphin, to let them know that this is crashed. No information goes back to them. And one of the problems is that there really isn't a history in here to go back to what you had watched previously. And that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, something that's, uh, I find kind of uh, ironic. Uh, now you can do this if there is a history here. But no, no real history here. No real history that tells you, you know. And if you go into, uh, the history of what you watched on, let's say you, you, what you, you know, you wanted to do something and you want to find out where you were. Nope. 
your history doesn't update properly. <laughs> so it, the history here is useless. Now I do remember that we were with Melissa Vlogs. So I'll go here because I do remember that. And we're going to do single. Uh, and as I said, we do the, the single uh, uh, tab. No change in the um, actual. Uh, so uh, I'm going to refresh this so that we can have the right channel. Okay. So you will go to videos. And here it doesn't bring in the uh, pictures. The pictures are not there, but I will refresh it because it didn't change your uh, URL either. Oh, wait, we go. A little slow here. It's now starting to change. But what will happen, it's going to sit here like this for a long time now. This is going to sit here, and there's actually nothing actually happening on the device itself. If you look at the, uh, the LEDs on the device to see if you've got traffic. There's no traffic. So the only option here right now is to hit refresh. And it brings you back to the feed again. So you want to go to videos. There you go. Now we're at videos. So we go, we're on number four. We want number four. There we go. Number four. This is what we wanted. Now, the ones I'm, I'm, I'm going to sort of send this out, and I want two more vlogs that I'm looking at this one here and this one here. So I'm going to go do these two. Uh, I'm going to go do these two vlogs, and then I'll come back and talk to you a, bit, a little bit later on. Democratic Earth. Earth.